Yes, I mean, occasionally we come out and get dictums like this saying you can't refer people who smoke or you can't refer people who are fat to get uh, procedures done. I mean, obviously, I've spent 33, 34 years now as a GP trying to persuade people to change their lifestyles and be more healthy. Um, and I think you can persuade, you can cajole, you can encourage, you can give information. But I don't think it's my job as a doctor to tell people what to do. Mm. I treat patients as individuals, and individuals have different reasons for perhaps overeating or perhaps being unable to lose weight at that stage of their lives, or for smoking indeed, which is I'm obviously, I don't have any medical experience at all. Uh, so I wonder whether, as a complete lay person, there is a justification. If you are, for instance, um, a smoker, and you're receiving treatment for a lung condition, yes. surely giving up smoking yeah. is the biggest thing you can do. It and really therefore, is. any measure to make yes. you do that is going to improve not just your health, but the yes. outcome of the surgery. Yes, but that's absolutely true as far as it goes. But you can't tell people what to do. You must encourage them. You must give them information. You must help them to make change. OK, Actually, Miriam, you're, yeah. you're looking aghast at this. Well, I'm not quite aghast, but I think there's another case to be put, which is the medical profession has a responsibility to make sure that patients are in the optim optimum health before they undergo surgery. Mm. And I think that, um, that, that certain steps do have to be taken. I don't see it as a glass half empty the way that Peter does. I see this as a glass half full. I think that it's um, a positive opportunity for people to actually take responsibility for their health, invest... See, I'm, I'm talking about this, because I, on the one hand, I actually think the nanny state can be quite effective if it concentrates on things like getting people to stop smoking. Um, on the other hand, actually stopping them from having operations as a punishment for a lifestyle no, it choice isn't, it seems yes, to it me is, to stray past not, nanny state it into something not a, a bit more sinister. It is not a punishment and it is not But punitive. it is though, isn't it? No, it isn't. Well, it, because it comes all, across as a punishment. No, well, but it isn't. In reality, it isn't. Because it is only a deferment. This yes. doesn't mean you're not going to have surgery. But it means Miriam, that if, just if, if, what if you, you died in the meantime, my no, no, I would have had to take time off sick. No, but but Piers, you're exaggerating to make a point. Nobody's going to die while they're waiting. People How do you know? Are, That's not because true, people are going to be assessed, and if something is urgently needed, they will get it. This is for non-urgent surgery. Mm. Doctor, yes, when you're but you, if you if you. Had, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I had a hip replacement a year ago last November. But you had obstacles put in the way, didn't you? Yes, um, the, it was difficult. I, I went to an NHS hospital and they were very, very good for me and I had a brilliant surgeon. Now, if I hadn't had that operation, I wouldn't have been able to carry on working as a GP. It was getting to the stage where I couldn't walk up the corridor at the surgery. I couldn't stand up to examine my patients. Now, if I'd been told, because I'm a fat lump, that I had to wait six months for my surgery, five months of those, I would have been off sick. That's not good for my patients. It's not economically valid. Um, the actual cost burden to the NHS of people being fat, uh, smoking's a slightly different matter, but the cost burden of people being fat is less than 2% of the NHS budget. Now, well, that's still not an insignificant sum it's of money. It's not an insignificant sum of money. And where, where do you feel comfortable about the nanny state actually saying, you know what, you're eating horrendously badly, mm. you're massively yeah. overweight, you're going to be a burden on the NHS, which is already really struggling for money. And a burden money. to yourself, right. because people who are not fit when they undergo surgery have longer hospital stays, more financial burden mm. to the NHS, more complications, more financial burden to the NHS. And well, we are getting and fatter, aren't we? We're getting fatter as a nation, young people in particular, the obesity rates of young people in this country are some of the worst in Europe. Yes, but you know So the message the... is not getting through, whatever that message may be. But this about taking better care of yourself. This particular scheme in which there is a, a unique six monthly program to help you to lose weight mm. and to help you to stop smoking, um, that may pr produce a change of lifestyle for life. Mm. For the rest of your life, you could be healthier but and Dr. less Miriam, of a burden. Sorry, can I just, I, and, and I'm sure that what, you know, that lots of people think you're, you're talking total common sense, although other people will find it very insensitive. But the most likely, you know, cause of, accident or death presumably being on the roads and yet you can't stop people having 
you know, operations because they, they've been involved in a car accident. That's you can't stop people who do dangerous sports having emergency treatment because Nobody's they damage themselves. There are all sorts of things that we do. Being. And that's the point. Where do you, where do you stop? stop? Do you there you are stop all sorts of ways that we driving. put ourselves at risk. We have to treat everybody. Do you, do you say no, to oh. someone with anorexia nervosa, no, you can't have any treatment because the risks to you are slightly more because your BMI is less than this, 15, this you is, might have a low potassium. Well, that's a valid, is, that's a valid is, point, isn't it, Mike? Are you, the, are you going to I mean, you, you, know, you can say that to lifestyle. somebody who's overweight, but what about somebody who is dangerously underweight? Yes, but Does the same rule apply? No, of course not, Piers. Why? Because, well, because... But uh, there is uh, much cases, at risk in surgery because of case, low potassium. Yes, but cases are taken individually. You're not going to deny someone who has an acute need of em emergency treatment you're not going to do that. But taking that. your argument Miriam that if you are massively overweight the surgery itself could be extra problematic. Or what? If you're dangerously underweight it can also be dangerously problematic Piers, so why would the same logic not apply if you're very underweight? Well, I, because what we're trying to do here is to ameliorate a situation. We're trying to make it better. The very fact people need to eat less very, very anorexic people need to eat more. Yes. It's the same thing, only in reverse. It's the same thing. And it has the same health issues around it. I don't understand why the point the doctor made there is not a valid one, which is actually it should apply on both sides of the spectrum, shouldn't it? And, and if well, you're going what, to say what? to people who are overweight, you can't have your operation for six months, mm. the smoking I will take as a separate thing because there is great evidence of benefit from stopping smoking prior to surgery. Um, in all honesty, there is some evidence of benefit to losing weight prior to surgery. But are you going to say to people who are overweight, well, we're not going to operate on you for six months. Oh, by the way, carry on paying your taxes. Does it apply to people who um, drink too much well, as well? Yes, and of course... Alcohol, they have, drugs, they have I mean, almost everything, really. Yes. You know, I mean, let's I mean, face it, we, we live in a world in which people have a choice of lifestyle. If you put yourself under too much stress at work, and which we, we know is a cause of And we have to illness. treat people as individuals yeah. and give them the Let less possible... Let those who are pure, Miriam... <laughs> Cast the stones. <laughs> now, you're the you only person stones. I know, actually, so you're the wrong person to be directing that at.